Hello Travelers, Boardman21 here, and today is a 1-75 to leveling guide for the Spellblade based around Shatterstrike. Now this is going to be one where you use Firebrand and Shatterstrike together. You're using Firebrand to do at least 3 hits, and that's going to give you a guaranteed crit and a bunch of more damage per stack of Firebrand that you have. That allows you to then use Shatterstrike, and that's going to be guaranteed to crit and then do a ton of damage, which is really big for it. This thing is pretty tanky. You're going to generate a lot of mana on every hit. However, at some points you are probably going to want to put on a shield. You'll do plenty of damage with a one-hand sword. But if you also get all of your resist and critical strike avoidance in order, you can also, with enough life and leech, just be able to go in with dual swords and be able to just absolutely annihilate the competition doing huge damage with every hit that you do. Now again, this is a 1-75. to I will break it down at all the normal leveling spots when you get a new skill and things like that and show you exactly where I put the points in both passives and the skills to make the build kind of go smoothly all the way from 1 to 75. Once you've reached 75, you can continue to build into it or transition into any other build that you have found on the web. Again, there will be a written guide in which I break it all down, and there will be build planners in every one of those so you can see exactly what was spec'd at all of those points. So, let's go ahead and get into it. Alright, Travelers, we're at level 4, just getting into the groove, but we did unlock our first specialization slot. We got just over 140 health, no resistance yet, but if you can find some, you definitely want to be going for some void and some physical at this point. Those two early on are going to help you the most for skills. The first skill that we're going to spec into is going to be Elemental Nova. We're going to be going into channeling with it and just lightning, trying to do as much damage in a large area as quick as possible. So the first point is going into lightning Nova. This converts it to just lightning, gives a bit of a damage boost, but also puts us on the path for getting Luminaire, which will allow us to channel it doing 5 hits per second, and the damage is pretty ridiculous, although it can be very, very mana expensive. Then for passives, we got 2 points. We're going to go ahead and throw both of them into Scholar. This is going to give us more health and more mana, and that's going to help us, one, stay alive, and two, for the mana, be able to use Elemental Nova more. And then in the inventory, haven't found anything special yet. We got a Relic with some mana regen. We got a increased mana for our amulet and nothing else on that that we want and then we are wearing two arboral circuits just to have move speed you can farm these on another character to throw them on your alt you might even have one drop for you on your character if it's your first time going but they do give you some move speed and then that illusionary tree has huge taunt which can help you with survivability that'll be it for this update i'll see you guys at level eight when we spec into our second skill All right, Travelers, we are now level 8, still deathless, have almost 300 health, still working on our resistances. We have about 32% void, which is good for this area. We do want some more physical, but haven't found any yet. And then for armor, we have about 14%, but that'll continue to drop. And then for damage types, at this point, you want lightning damage, but I do not have any at the moment. Our only weapon that dropped had some cold damage, and that was it. But you want to be going for lightning damage, spell damage, and if you want some critical strike chance. For skills, we got three more points for Elemental Nova. All three of them going to go ahead and go into Elemental Expanse, and our next point is going to go ahead and let us channel that so we can get five hits per second, which is going to be much faster than what we're hitting for right now. Our second skill that we're going to spec into, you have two options. You can go for Flame Ward if you want some more defense, but for us, we're going to go Lightning Blast just to have some more single target damage and start building down towards Convergence. So one point into Storm Razor for now, and then again, we'll be working down there towards Convergence so that we can have it chained to the same enemy and do a bunch of damage to them. 
and then for passives we got five more points we're gonna go ahead and throw all five of them into scholar for more health and for more mana and then for our inventory we found a bunch of items so far basically at this point anything with resist void resist physical resist being the main ones intelligence health all that's going to help you mana regen is also really nice it's going to be able to let you cast a lot more element to nova especially once we start channeling it all of those will be useful and for now we don't have a two-handed staff that we found with extra damage two-handed staff would obviously do a lot more damage but the main thing you're looking for is getting as much adaptive spell damage as you can get on your weapon so right now we're just going one hand and a shield but if i find a two-hander with more we will upgrade to that just to be able to do more single target damage and that'll be it for this update i'll see you guys at level 13 when we do the next one All right, travelers, we are now level 12, still deathless, almost at 400 health, still working on trying to find some physical resist, but we do have some elemental and got a little bit higher on the void, and we have a bit of armor as well. As for damage types, we do have some spell damage now. We did switch over to a two-hand staff, and we have a little bit of lightning as well. For skills, we got one more point for Elemental Nova. Going to go ahead and throw it into Luminaire so that we can now channel that. This will burn through your mana very, very fast, but you will do a lot of hits and a lot of spurt damage. And then for Lightning Blast, we're going to go ahead and put one more point into Storm Razor for more base critical strike chance, more damage. And then two points into Chain Lightning, so it now has additional change. This does increase the mana cost, but with one more point, we will be able to chain it to the same target, so it'll become really good for single target once we get one more point. For passives, we got four more points. We're going to go ahead and throw one in Scholar and then start building into Arcanist. This will give us Fire and Lightning Resist as well as more Intelligence, and the Intelligence is an increased damage source for us, as well as Ward Retention, which will help when we use Flame Ward and get some Ward. It'll help uh, retain that a little bit longer and make it decay a little bit slower. And then for our inventory, we did find the Avarice, or we got the Avarice from the Quest Reward. This gave us some Elemental Resist. This also gives us Elemental Damage Leech's Health, which counts for Lightning, so that helps us out. And then for everything else, again, we're just going for Resist, Health, and we did switch to a two-handed weapon. It has a little bit more adaptive spell damage than the one-hander we had. And again, spell damage, lightning damage are the main damage sources you want to be stacking at this point. And that'll be it for this update. I'll see you guys at level 20 when we spec into our third skill.
All right, travelers, we are now level 20. Time to spec into our third skill. We've got almost about 500 health. We did finally get some physical resist, lost a little bit of void. And at this point, void and physical are still the two things you really want to go for. Elemental, of course, is also good. We do have a little bit of dodge now, same amount of armor. And then we did gain a little bit more spell damage and lightning damage with a nice two-handed staff. But for skills, we got three more points for Elemental Nova. We're going to go ahead and start building into the base crit chance, just so it has a higher crit chance, so it does more damage more often. So three points into Charge Destruction. Then for Lightning Blast, we have three points as well. I already put one point into Convergence, just to speed up killing bosses. The next two points are both going into Arcing Power, so that we can get additional change without increasing the mana cost, as mana right now can be a bit of an issue. And for our third skill, we're going to go ahead and start to spec into Flame Word. And for Flame Word, we got four points. We're going to go ahead and throw three of them into Dilation, so that it will last as long as possible and one point into store word defense for more word when we activate it and then of course we'll probably be respecting both of our elemental nova and lightning blast once we get shatter strike and firebrand as those will become our main skills once we switch over to the spellblade mastery but that's still a little ways away for passives we got 11 more points we're going to cap out the arcanist so five more points there and then we're going to go ahead and throw in four points to Knowledge of Destruction for Crit Chance and Crit Multiplier. That's 20 points there. I'm going to save the other two for when we get into Spellblade because we want to work towards getting as many points as we can in here because we'll have Shatter Strike once we master, but then Firebrand takes 30 points and they work well together. So we're going to work towards that as fast as possible. So we're going to save those two points for that. And then for the inventory, like I said, for the two-handed staff we have, we got Spell Damage, Lightning Damage on it. And then for Uniques, we still have the two rings on. We have the Avarice for the Elemental Damage, Legis Health. And then for Gear, again, just going for Resist, Physical, and Void being the main ones that you want at this point. We also went for a lot of Mana Regen to try and make the build just feel a little bit better and not have to use Mana Strike as much, as that will give you Mana back, but it can feel pretty bad to use it in melee range. And that'll be it for this update. I'll see you guys at level 25 when we choose the Mastery. All right, travelers, we are now level 25, still deathless, and we've got just over 500 health. As you can see for resistances, we still got our void and physical, not quite as much as we wanted. You do want to get necrotic, as in chapter 4, necrotic is going to be the main source of damage you're going to take, so make sure you get that up as much as possible while keeping up the physical as well. Then for skills, we're going to go ahead and unspec Elemental Nova to do Shatter Strike, but first we need to choose our mastery so we have access to it, so we're going to go Spellblade. We're going to gain forward gain on every melee hit we do every time we use Shatter Strike, and it does multiple hits when we spec into the recast. And then we get mana spent on melee attacks is also going to be transferred into our ward as well, which is going to be nice for our survivability. So now we are a Spellblade. We're going to go ahead and unspec Elemental Nova, and we despecialize that. Then we're going to throw in Shatter Strike, and then for the first points that we're going to want to put into this, 
we are going to go ahead and keep Lightning Blast just to make sure that'll be like our single target just in case. And Shatter Strike's not doing a whole ton of damage. But first, when we build into it, we're going to go with two points into Lingering Chill, one point into Breath of Cold, and then one point into Whiteout, which will allow us to recast it. It does increase the mana cost, but it's going to give you two hits every time that you use it instead of one. And then eventually we'll be going into the Cold Steel to give us a whole bunch of Critical Strike Multiplier per sword, because once we're dual wielding, we will have two swords, and that's going to give us a ton of Critical Strike Multiplier. Then for Lightning Blast, we got two more points. We're going to throw both of them. Two more points into Arcing Power. And then for Flame Ward, with four more points, we're just going to put all four of them into Barrier for that less hit damage taken while Flame Ward is active. And then for Passives, we got seven points all going into the Spell Blade. We want to be working towards getting our first 30 in here so we can get Firebrand. The first seven, we're going to go ahead and throw into Infused Weapon. This will give us a ton more cold damage with our cold skills. So all this will be added flat cold damage for our Shatter Strike. So first seven points all into there. And then for the inventory, like I said, right now I'm going to leave the staff on, but we're going to switch to a two-handed weapon. But right now for Lightning Blast, this will continue to help it. It also has melee physical on it, so we'll still do a little bit of damage with uh, Shatter Strike. But we will be making the switch over to a two-handed weapon here shortly. And then eventually you can dual wield Argo Sword and Shield if you want to be more tankier. But dual wielding will definitely give you a ton more damage. And that'll be it for this update. I will see you guys at the next one at level 35 when we spec into our fourth skill. All right, Travelers, we are now level 35. We got almost 600 health, and our resistance, we still don't have any necrotic, which would help you at this point, but we have enough ward generation, just enough ward overall from Flame Ward that we haven't really had any problems with survivability. We have died once, but as you get your physical up and necrotic up, those are two things you really want to go for at this point. We got about 9% armor, a little bit of dodge, two things we're not really building into too hard at this point, and then again, we are using cold skills, so cold damage and melee damage added are the two things you really want to look for at this point. First, we're going to do our passives before skills because we want to unlock Enchant Weapon. We will be specking into it. So we're going to cap out the Infused Weapon. We're going to throw five points into Arcane Warden. That's going to give us ward uh, gained every time we use an elemental attack and hit at least one enemy, which would be Enchant Weapon. We're going to throw five points into Frozen Steel. And then to unlock our next one, which will be Essence Tool, we need two more points. So we're going to throw two more into Arcane Warden. And then throw the last two points that we have into Essence Tool, which gives us more melee attack speed and even more ward gain when we use a melee attack and hit at least one enemy. That stacks with the Arcane Warden together. And that unlocks Enchant Weapon. Firebrand will be the fifth skill that we go for, but that'll be later. But for now, for skills, we're going to go ahead and unspec Lightning Blast. And we're going to throw in Focus. Focus is what we're using to get mana back right now, so you really want to use this as much as possible because Shatter Strike is going to take all of your mana. But we're going to go ahead and throw four points into Revelation and then one point into Mana Flooded. Then for Shatter Strike, we got four more points. I already threw three in, so we did throw one more point into Whiteout, and then we threw one point into Icy Flow and then one point into Shiver. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and throw two more points into Icy Flow, one point into Shiver, and then we're going to start specking into the Cold Steel. We're going to switch to a Sword, and this way when we do Critical Strikes, we're going to get a lot more Multiplier. So you can get 120% here per Sword, and you can have up to two Swords once we're dual wielding. That's going to give us 240% Critical Strike Multiplier, which is huge for the build. Then we got Flame Ward with three more points. We're going to cap out the Barrier, throw two points into Prismatic Buffer, so we take less elemental damage while it's active. And then for the fourth skill, like I said, Enchant Weapon is the one we'll spec into. And there's several things you can do here, but the first thing we're going to do is get as much of the added cold damage as we can get. So we get a big boost of offense when it's active. So two points into Shivering Blade and then three points into Frostbrand. This will give us a bunch of added melee cold damage and increased melee cold damage, making Shatter Strike hit even harder when it's active.
And then for items, we haven't really changed much. Currently, we are wearing a two-handed spiked mole. It's a two-handed mace. It's got leech for us, critical strike multiplier, health on hit, which has been nice. But we are going to switch over to a two-handed sword here at any time when we find with, with melee cold damage on it. That'll be huge for us. And that'll be it for this update. Again, going for necrotic physical. That's all we're going for. We did get rid of one of our arboral circuits. But I'll see you guys at level 43 for the next update. Alright travelers, we are now level 40, we got just over 600 health and it is time to respect some skills to get our final setup going. For defense, we still do not have any necrotic resist, but we've been doing just fine, only died a couple of times. We still have some void, some physical, and a bit more elemental than we had before, and then about the same amount of dodge and armor that we had. And now for skills... We're going to go ahead and put two points into Shatter Strike. For Shatter Strike, we're going to continue to build into the area and the cold penetration as it gives us a big boost of damage. You can also put into the mana efficiency and ward gains. This will help you just be able to cast it more, but we're doing just fine the way we have it set up. For Focus, we're going to cap out the mana flooded. One point into Desperate Meditation, one point into Energy Infusion, and then start building into some extra armor. And then for Flame Ward, we're actually going to unspec this, and we're going to be specking into Firebrand here in a second. And then with Enchant Weapon, we have six more points. Cap out the Frostband for that melee cold damage, and then put four points into Concentration to have the longest active duration that we can have with it, so that we can get all of that benefit from the 25 added cold damage and the 100% increased melee cold damage for as long as possible. Uh, then we got to do passives real quick, just so we can unlock Firebrand. We got eight points, three of them, going into Essence Duel. Then we're going to put one point into Gemini, so that we can now dual wield swords. And then we're also going to put four points in Prismatic Blade. This gives us Dex, and then it also gives us additional cold damage for our cold melee attacks. And it will unlock Volca's Razor, which we'll be building into next. Then back to skills, we're going to spec into Firebrand. We're going to put three points into Searing Brand. One point into incineration, which gives us damage per stack for the next attack we use that's not firebrand, and one point in illuminating fire, which gives us a guaranteed crit with that. So now all we have to do is get up to three stacks of firebrand, so we got to use it three times. This will increase the amount of damage because if we have three stacks, we'll do 60% more damage with Shatter Strike, the next skill, and it will be a guaranteed crit. So many good things there. And then one point into Wildfire so we can actually stack above that and get even more stacks for more damage. And then for the inventory, we haven't changed much here. It's all the same. 
haven't respect basically anything. We just have lots of mana regen, so we don't have to focus quite as much for the weapon. Currently, we are using a two-handed mace, that spiked mole that we had the whole time. We are going to be switching to two swords, just because when we get that guaranteed crit, we get all that crit multi. So as soon as we get back to town, we'll be gambling or looking at least on the ground for two one-handed swords that have added cold, increased cold, or attack speed on them. Any of those will be really helpful. Melee health on hit helps. Uh, chill on hit, frailty on hit, armor shred on hit, any of that are good stats to have. But that'll be it for this update. I'll see you guys at level 50 when we spec into our fifth skill, which will be us respecing into Flame Ward. All right, Travelers, we are now level 51. We've got just over 800 health. We're still in the Fall of the Outcast timeline, trying to cap out. We're not going to do the boss until we cap out the Necrotic, at least. But we are working on the rest of the resist. we got quite a bit more physical, still getting the elemental up. And then, of course, we're going to try and get some poison, but we do want to cap the Necrotic before taking on the Abomination in the final boss. we got a bit more armor than we had before, and for damage types, not much more than we had, but we do have a lot of Critical Strike Multiplier now, which is helping because we do have that guaranteed with Shatter Strike after the third hit with Firebrand. For skills, we got two more points for Shatter Strike. We're going to go ahead and throw one of them into Icy Flow for more mana efficiency with it, more word gain, and then another one into Cold Still, so we get more Critical Strike Multiplier per sword. This is going to be the biggest damage boost you get right now because we are dual wielding swords so it's a huge boost then for focus we got four more points we're gonna go ahead and put one more point into iron stance and then two of them into prismum barrier just because right now when we are using it if we use it which we're really not at this point because three firebrands and a shatter strike you tend to mana regen everything that you need at least we would have our resistance when we do have to stand still which will help us in the echoes we got nine more points for firebrand we're gonna go ahead and put one more point in wildfire for another stack two points in prio shielding four points into undying fire so that the stacks will last longer. And then one point in Everflame so that every time we do get a stack, it refreshes the other stacks. And this allows us to keep stacks much, much easier. Plus, they're going to last longer. And then we're going to go ahead and put one point in Fulmination so that we have more attack speed per stack so that we can attack faster and faster, get our stacks quicker, and be able to use Shatter Strike faster. Then we got four points for Enchant Weapon. For this, we're going to throw all four of them into Efficacy. And this is going to make it to where Enchant Weapon no longer costs mana. And we are going to get 40% more melee elemental damage, which is what we're doing, melee cold which is perfect for it. Then for our last skill, we're going to spec back into Flame Ward, cap out to the Dilation with three points, put one point in Star Wars Defense, and then put the rest of them into Barrier, and then we'll continue on with that in the next update. For passives, we got 13 points. We're going to throw 10 of them into Volca's Razor so that we now have a 150% increased elemental damage with high cost or 
anything that costs more than 10 mana, which is Shatter Strike. And then we're also going to start building into River Blade, which is going to give us more melee cold damage. So the other three points we have there are going to go there. And then the last thing that we'll be building into with this build is Blade Weaver, which gives us a more damage multiplier. So for every stack of Volca's Razor, or for every time we use a zero costing skill, you'll get blade weaving. And then with your high costing skill, which will be shatter strike, you get more damage per stack you have up to 10 stacks, which gives you 100% more damage or it's 15%. So 150% more. And that's with the 150% increase. So those two uh, damage modifiers really help shatter strike to do a lot more damage. And then for the inventory, Nothing's really changed here. We did find a nice pair of boots. It had a bunch of physical resist, move speed for us. We still have on one Arboral Circus. As soon as we find a better ring, we'll get rid of that, switch it out. We still have Avarice. Still looking for a new pair of gloves that has melee damaged Leech's health, which will be huge for us. Maybe some hybrid health, and we'll switch that off. And then for swords, uh, eventually, once we get into the levels of 60, we'll be getting into some crystal swords so that we have elemental damage on them with more attack speed. But for now, just wear any sword that you have that's got added cold damage, increased cold damage, crit multi, all those really help it. And that'll be it for this update. I'll see you guys at level 55 for the next one. All right, Travelers, we are now level 55. We've got about 850 health. Still working on a resist, but we have capped out Necrotic. We've capped out Lightning. Still working on Elemental altogether a little bit. A little bit more physical needed. And then Poison and Void. Void will be the big one that we hit up on the next timeline, along with Poison, just to cap them all out. We do have a bit more armor than we had before, but we're losing the dodge again. Not building into dodge for this one. We do have 50% increased Void damage. Still going for Critical Strike multiplier and things. And we did start building into a bit of Endurance. We do not have any Critical Strike avoidance right now, but if we do we get the woven flesh woven flesh is a great chest piece to just cap that out for you and you can use it on this build for skills we got one more point for shatter strike we're going to throw it into cold steel for focus one more point throw it into prison barrier one point for firebrand going to go ahead and continue building into fulmination for enchant weapon we have an additional point for this one. You can start building into the increased melee attack speed, which is all right. But for me, I'm going to put the one point in Frozen Sparks for now so that we get added melee cold damage for every one physical, that, or for every 10 physical on a weapon, we get plus one from this. We have about 60 physical right now, so that's another six flat cold damage for us, which is nice. And then for Flame Ward, we're going to cap out the barrier. We're going to cap out the prismatic buffer and then start capping out the Star Ward defense. For passives, we got four more passive points. Going to throw two of them into River Blade and then two of them into Blade Weaver. So when we get those two stacks, we will do 30% more damage, which is really nice. At about three points, that's really all you need because you'll just do three Shatter Strikes or three Firebrands and then a Shatter Strike. But you can go all the way up to 10 to get some really big hits, but you do have to do 10 Firebrands to get all 10 stacks of that before you use a Shatter Strike, which can take a while. And then in the inventory, we have found some better gear. We found a pair of gloves that gave us some leech rate, some melee damage, leech's health, melee attack speed. We had a nice pair of boots that dropped. We also had a nice relic that dropped. This gave us a bunch of cold damage, mana regen, also elemental and endurance. And then a ring that really helped us cap out the necrotic resist, as well as had mana regen, obviously the void damage you don't need. And then for idols, right now, flat added cold damage or melee increased melee elemental damage are huge ones we haven't found any of those we just have a bunch of word gaining ones and increased damage uh not cold damage but increased fire which doesn't do us anything but some mana some extra ward some extra health it's really all we have at the moment but the idols that you want the increased melee elemental damage ones are huge and we are still looking for those and that'll be it for this update i'll see you guys at level 65 for the next one
Alright travelers, we are now level 65, have just over a thousand health, we got the elemental resist capped, the physical almost capped, necrotic almost capped, still working a little bit of void, and then obviously don't have any poison yet, you definitely want to get some of that. For damage types, we got just over 100% cold damage, our critical strike multiplier at 270%, and again that gets increased because we're using swords with shatter strike. So for skills, for shatter strike, one more point in cold steel, one more point in icy flow, that's going to give us more ward gain, you're going to get more of that critical strike multiplier, that 240% on top of the 200 70% we had just over 500% which is huge for your crits and with firebrand you have that guaranteed crit which is huge so moving on to focus we've got two more points gonna go ahead and throw one more in prison barrier and then one into iron stance for firebrand we're gonna go ahead and cap out fuelmination with one more point and then cap out undying fire as well for the stack duration and the more attack speed for Enchant Weapon, we got two more points. We're going to go ahead and throw both of them into Celerity. So when it's active, we have more melee attack speed, allowing us to attack faster. And for Flame Ward, we've got three points. We're going to cap out Star Wars Defense with one more point, put one point into Infusion for increased fire damage. And then we're going to convert that into Cold. And to do that, we're going to put one point in Fire Aura and then go up into Frost Ward with the next point. That way, we'll get that increased damage whenever it's active. And with Enchant Weapon together, you're going to get a big bonus of damage. And then for Passives, we got ten more points. We're going to go ahead and and cap out Blade Weaver, so eight points there. And then with our last two points, we're going to go ahead and put those in to Prismatic Blade for more added damage. Then for items, we're still wearing all the same stuff. We have the Woven Flesh for the 100% critical strike avoidance. We're still going to do swords for the gloves. We have that increased leech rate with melee attack speed and melee damage leeches health. Great for survivability. Going for lots of mana regen on everything you can and just a bunch of resist. And that's pretty much going to be it for this update. I'll get see you guys at level 75 for the final one. Alright travelers, we are now level 75, so the final update for the leveling guide, we have just over a thousand health, we have capped out our resist except for the poison and the void and physical a little bit left there, but we did get all the elemental, the necrotic, and even though we didn't have any poison, poison enemies while they were a struggle, other than dots, it wasn't too bad, so the new mobs in the chapter 9 area, the Majasa, snakes that have the big giant tornado poisons those are the main thing that you just want to look out for at this point we do have our endurance almost capped we have the critical strike avoidance and then for damage 70 percent cold and our critical strike multiplier sitting at about 230 but again remember you also get 240 percent when you are dual wielding swords we did change ours up whenever we were running into trouble we did throw on a, a bastion of honor you can throw on any shield that'll help you out and whenever you're not dual wielding of course you won't take that 15 percent increased damage so if you do struggle throw a shield on you'll still do plenty of damage Damage. For skills, one more point for Shatter Strike. We're going to go ahead and throw this one into Shiver for more area and for that cold penetration, so you'll do a little bit more damage and in a larger area with it. For focus, we're going to go ahead and throw it in Iron Stance. For Firebrand, one more point. There's a lot of options what you could do here, but I'm just going to go ahead and keep putting it into gaining more ward every time that we use it. That way we just have more survivability. You will be basically in melee range and face tanking whenever you're using it, so getting that ward is very nice. For Enchant Weapon, one more point. going to keep going into Celerity for that melee attack speed while it's active. And then again, we're going to convert our good old Fire Aura, or whenever Flame Word, it'll be converted into Cold. And this will make it to where the fire damage increase is now cold damage increase. So when you use Flame Word and use Enchant Weapon, both of those are going to buff you and give you a bunch of cold damage. So you will do more damage, so try and time them together. 
And then for passives, we got 10 more points. We're going to cap out the Prismatic Blade for the added cold damage to cold melee attacks. Also gives us some decks. We're going to max out the Arcane Warden so we gain ward every time we use a melee elemental attack and hit at least one enemy. Then we're going to put 5 points in Arcane Shielding. This is going to give us less damage taken when we have the Arcane Shield up. You get the Arcane Shield for 4 seconds whenever you use a melee attack and hit at least one enemy. So that's what we'll be doing. And then for the last two points, we're going to throw them into Mana Reaver, and this gives us a chance. Right now, we're at a 12% chance that every time we use a melee attack, that you'll have a chance to gain back 10 mana, which is huge. So when you do your Firebrand, there's a chance you'll get mana back, and then you can use multiple Shatter Strikes and spend your mana really quick. But this will just give a way to give some extra mana back, especially if you don't have as much mana regen as I do. And then for the inventory, right now we still have on the Woven Flesh until we get all of our Critical Strike Avoidance from other sources. If we had the Blessing right now, we'd have just enough. We do have a Bastion of Honor on. We're trading between that and dual wielding with another Crystal Sword. Remember, if you have Shattered Lance Swords, those will work really well as well. And then for the Idols, we did find a couple of them that had the increased melee elemental damage. You can also get Ward per second generated, which is really nice for it. Those will be kind of your best in slot ones so that you have survivability as well as increased damage. You can also get Cold Damage doubled if you have over 300 mana as a suffix. That'll give you a ton of extra damage as well. But that is it for this leveling guide. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.